What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. And in this next video, we are given this function y equals negative 3x squared minus 8x minus 5. So notice it's a quadratic in standard form. And given that quadratic, we have to do number one, find the y-intercept. Number two, find the vertex by two different methods. So using the formula where the x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. And then the second method by completing the square, by taking that standard form converting it to vertex form. That's what completing the square means. And then number three, once we have that information, we can then make a pretty solid graph. So starting with number one, finding the y-intercept, that's actually probably the easiest because if you have a quadratic that's in standard form, which is this over here, ax squared plus bx plus c, well, the y-intercept is always just going to be the c value because for the y-intercept, we know the x value has to be 0. And if we plug in 0 for x, notice that these terms would go away and we'd just be left with the c value. And the c value in this case is negative 5, right? If we plug in 0, 0, we'd be left with y equaling negative 5. So 0, negative 5 is the y-intercept. So that's the answer to number one. So getting the y-intercept is, uh, is pretty easy if the quadratic is in standard form. Now number two, we got to find the vertex in two different ways. So first using the formula x equals negative b over 2a. So that formula gives us the x value of the vertex. Now in order to use this formula, you always got to make sure that the quadratic is in standard form. Now some of you may be using this formula in class, some of you may not be, so I also put in completing the square as another method to find the vertex. But this is a nice way to quickly check your answer if you are completing the square just to make sure you get that right vertex, at least the right x value of the vertex. And then once we get the x value of the vertex, we plug in that x value to get the corresponding y value. Right? But remember to use this formula the quadratic has to be in standard form, which it is. Now, what's the a value? It's negative 3. The b value is negative 8. And then the c value is negative 5. And so plugging in these parameters into the formula, we have negative b. Now, the b is negative 8, so that's in brackets, all over 2 times the a value, which is negative 3 like that. And so notice negative negative that turns into a positive. 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6. And then 8 over 6 that simplifies to 4 over 3 and we have this negative there. So negative 4 over 3 is the x value of the vertex. And if we want to get the corresponding y value we take this x value here and then sub it in for x in the standard form. So we'll have negative 4 over 3 squared minus 8 times negative 4 over 3 minus 5 like that. Now over here, be careful with your algebra. So negative 4 to the power 2 gives us 16. 3 to the power 2 gives us 9. And then negative negative, that gives us 32, positive 32 over 3. And then we got a minus 5 like that. And then from here, um, we could take the negative 3 multiplied by the 16. We could also take the 3 and bring it into the 9 3 times. So we'd have negative 16 over 3 plus 32 over 3. And then we need to combine all these fractions a common denominator. So this 5 is like over 1. So if we multiply it by 3. Multiply the denominator by 3, multiply the numerator by 3, we would end up with minus 15 over 3. If you didn't do this step, you'd end up with negative 48 over 9, and then negative 48 over 9 simplifies to negative 16 over 3. And so what would happen here is we would end up with negative 16 plus 32, that gives us positive 16, positive 16 minus 15 gives us 1. And so we'd end up with 1 over 3 over here. So that would be the y value of the vertex. And so the vertex, 
I'll write it over here on this side is negative 4 over 3 and 1 over 3. All right, so using this formula, you get the x value of the vertex, then plug it in to get the corresponding y value. Now, what if you get the vertex by completing the square? By taking this and changing it to vertex form, uh, I feel like, actually, I don't know which one would have more algebra. I feel like maybe completing the square will, but we'll see. So what happens with completing the square is you gotta make sure that x squared is by itself, so you take out a negative three. So you'd end up with x squared plus eight over three x, and then we have the minus five like that, right? Because if I take out a negative three, dividing this by negative three, there's just a one left in front of the x squared, then negative eight divided by negative three gives us eight over three like that, then we have the minus five. So the reason why the completing square in this case is gonna be a little bit more complex is because we're gonna be dealing with fractions over here. And now what we got to do is we got to take this B value, the 8 over 3, we got to divide it by 2, and then we have to square that. So this would end up being what? 8 over 3 divided by 2 is like 8 over 3 times 1 over 2, which would give us 8 over 6. And that would be squared, which would be like 4 over 3 squared, which would give us 16 over 9. Right, so that's like the b over two squared. That's what we gotta do when we're completing the square, this b value over here after we factor out the negative three. And so this 16 over nine, what we do now is we go negative three x squared plus eight over three x plus 16 over nine minus 16 over nine and then we have a minus five, like that, right? And then from here, what happens is the negative 16 over nine we have to take out, so we multiply it by the negative three, so we'd end up with negative three x squared plus eight over three x plus 16 over nine. We're taking this out, multiplying by the negative three, so that would give us positive 48 over nine minus five. And then from here, the reason why we did that b over two squared is because this is always gonna be a perfect square trinomial. It's always gonna be x, this sign, whatever this sign is, sometimes it'll be minus, sometimes it'll be positive, in this case it's positive. And then this value is always gonna be this value divided by two. So eight over three divided by two gives us eight over six, which gives us four over three. So this would end up being four over three, and then that's gonna be squared like that. All right, so then this simplifies to 16 over three minus uh, 15 over three. Right, if we change the, my, uh, the five to a fraction with the same denominator, and then this ends up being negative three x plus four over three squared plus one over three. And then notice that from this vertex form, we could tell the vertex is negative four over three, right? It's always gonna be the opposite sign. And then that value, the one over three, like that, which is what we got when we use that formula as well, right? So a lot of the completing the square stuff a lot of times it's gonna be with integers, so it's a lot more simple, but wanted to go over an example where sometimes you may have to deal with fractions like this. So it's the same process, it's just a little bit more algebra. All right, so this here is the vertex form of this, and then from the vertex form, you could get the vertex, and then you could test this. You could take this, take this bracket, multiply it by the same bracket, foil that out, distribute the negative three in, and then see if you end up getting that same standard form, and you should. And then from here, all we have to do is just graph it. And so we have the, um, the y-intercept and the vertex, and I feel like that's enough 
to make a fairly accurate graph. So we'll have zero, negative five, and then we'll have negative four over three, which is like negative 1.33. So so we got like one, two, three, and then we have positive one over three. So let's say this is like one, two, three, right? This is maybe not to scale the negative five. If we went by this scale, it would be a little bit lower, but let's just keep it like this. So negative four over three would be like over here. And then one over three would be like over here, let's say. So the vertex would be right here negative four over three and one over three. Then obviously it's opening down, the A value is negative. And also when we had it in that vertex form, the A value in front of the negative, um, it was negative three. So it's opening down whichever way, whichever form you look at it. And so, and it's obvious that it's opening down because this is the vertex and it has to go through this point over here. So it's gonna look something like that. All right, so if you get something like this, you got to find the vertex two different ways. You can use the formula and then you can complete the square and then completing the square is a little bit more hectic in this case because we were dealing with fractions.